Well, let's go ahead and <clears throat> open our Bibles to Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter 5 is where we are. And we've been working through, uh, we looked at Adam's life in those first five verses. And then in verse 6, we began working through all these, the line of Adam. And where so-and-so begot, so-and-so begot, so-and-so, you know, uh, all the way through there. But it's a little more detailed than that because it tells us that they... Uh, uh, gives us the name and then says that they lived and they had a son, lived so many years and had a son, then they lived so many more years, and then they died. Uh, and we've seen that over and over again in here. And we hadn't seen a whole lot of details. You know, some uh, with Adam and Seth, of course, we knew some of the details and some of that was revealed to us uh, before and even Enosh as well. But some of these others, we don't have many details at all other than their name and just uh, looking at what those names mean. Uh, but the change is a little bit different uh, in verse 21. We don't have a whole lot of details about Enoch, uh, but we do have some. Look with me. Genesis 5, 21 uh, is where we are. <clears throat> Looking at uh, at Enoch, uh, and he was uh, the son of Jared there. So verse 21 says, Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. Uh, and we'll talk more about him in a moment. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And so very interesting stuff going on here, some interesting details. Uh, Enoch is a guy, it says twice in these verses, that he walked with God. I don't think you can say, give any higher praise or any say anything uh, better about someone than to say, that's somebody that walks with God. Yeah. And uh, and that's the way he was described. And I tell you what, if Enoch did it, you can too, all right? Uh, and, and so that that is, especially in the New Testament and with the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, uh, you know, we're told to walk in the Spirit and and uh, be filled with the Spirit and all those, and uh, abiding in Christ. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about walking with God. And so what did it mean that he walked with God? Well, as we look at this, we see, first of all, that Enoch walked with God personally. He walked with God personally. That's number one under uh, Enoch. Well, let me tell you what his name means. His name means dedicated. His name means dedicated. Uh, he is one that, that was certainly dedicated. Uh, but uh, he's dedicated to the Lord, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But he walked with God personally. So just break down that phrase that he walked with God. The word walked uh, means to move. That's, that's the idea. It's not just exercise, but it's movement. So it's saying here that he moved with God. That means wherever God went, Enoch went. And wherever Enoch went, God went. He, he moved with God. I mean, that's... Uh, it's awesome to think about that. Uh, the uh, Septuagint, which is the, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, uh, that really gets complicated there. Uh, but the word that they use to translate this when it says walt uh, means to be, be fitting. It means it is, it's, it's a good fit that they fit together. And although the, the Hebrew word means movement, but the idea is it is that as they moved, they fit together. They fit together in their life. They fit together in their walk. They fit together in their desires. They fit together in their heart. I tell you, uh, when Missy and I were dating at Blue Mountain College, uh, and uh, uh, I think we were engaged at that time, there's a lady there that ran uh, a little uh, cafe type thing uh, uh, and, and and stuff. And she, this, she was a sweet, sweet lady. And we would visit there and we'd go there and she'd look at us. And I remember one time we, we ordered that and she just kind of looked at us. She says, y'all's just a match uh, and, and everything. And so that's what we're talking about here with Enoch and God. They were just a match. Uh, they, they matched together. They fit together. Uh, matter of fact, that word can also be translated because it's the idea of wanting to fit together and, and coming together. It's the idea of, of pleasing uh, that it is something that is well pleasing, and so you could say in this that it's saying that as they walk together, that God pleased Enoch, that Enoch was pleased with God, and also that God was pleased with Enoch, and that's that should be the desire of our our lives and of our walk is to 
to, to please God uh, because in, in, in ha what we do because he pleases us in that. You know, it's interesting that this same word that is in the Greek here is also used in the New Testament in Hebrews eleven six, 6, where it says, without faith, listen, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Sure. And so this walk with God, you put those things together, the same word that is used in the New Testament, put together, that it was a walk of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He was living a life that was pleasing to God. So Enoch's walking by faith. It's a faith relationship with God. He walked with God. Not only does it say he walked, but it says he walked with. That word with means to be near. It means to be together with. It implies fellowship and communion. Not just, you know, we have a relationship with God. Uh, once you become a child of God, you're part of the family of God, but are you walking in fellowship with God? Are you walking in communion with God? And so that that's the idea of walking with, is that he walked in sync with him. He walked in communion with him, in constant fellowship with him. You know, we, uh, we're we saved when we come to Christ. Uh, we have that encounter with Christ where we, we give our lives to Christ, we put our faith in Christ, and he takes us from being lost to being saved, from being a, a child of the world, a child of the devil, to being a child of God, uh, to being uh, uh, guilty, to being uh, no longer condemned. You know, that's the change. There's a there's a change that takes place in our life. It may not be the same as what Paul had on the uh, or Saul had on the Damascus Road, but we all have that encounter with Christ where our, where we're saved and our lives are changed. But that's just the start. Once you're saved, you ought to be pursuing a life of communion with God, a life of fellowship with God. That's that's the way life is continued, that we continue to walk with God. I think the uh, a good picture of that is in John chapter 15, where Jesus talks about the vine and the branches, that he's the vine and we are the branches, and how we're to abide in him. That's another way of describing this walk with God, uh, with God. And who is he walking with? He's walking with God. He's walking with God. Notice it's the, the 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 name that is used here is not even the personal name. The idea of walking with implies that it's personally, but it's the power name of God. When you see G-O-D used in reference to God, it is, it, it is the power name. It's the all-powerful creator God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. That type of power. This is who he's walking with here. He's having a personal walk with the all-powerful God. And that's our God as well. That is our God as well. So we see as he's walking with God personally here that the Christian life, this our relationship with God, it's supposed to be that, that fellowship with God, and it ought to be actively lived out in walking with him. You know, we pray for revival and we need revival. Revival, that R-E at the, at the uh, beginning of it, it means to, to vive again, to bring life back. And, and we stray and so we need to be revived in, in that. But Vance Havner said, he said, well, we, the life we ought to live is not a life of revival, but a life of vival. <laughs> well, we never get away from walking with God. We never get away from depending upon him, that we just live a life of Bible. Bible's not a word, but it works in preaching. All right. But, uh, uh, so, <laughs> so that's that, you know, and that's what he's talking about. He lived in a, a state of constant Bible, if you will, uh, in his walking with God. He walked with God personally. Not only did he walk with God personally, but in this passage, we also see that he walked with God diligently. And I use that word diligently is because he had challenges around him. It wasn't just an, an, an easy thing for him to do. He lived in a fallen world. And so he had many challenges going on around him. In verse 21 there, it talks about uh, that he lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. And after he begot Methuselah, he walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. That's a long time to be walking with God. But he walked with God for, for three half 300 years. And he may have been doing it before. It doesn't say that he wasn't doing it before, but it says specifically in these 300 years uh, that he was. And he would have done it a whole lot longer than 300 years, but that kind of gets interrupted gloriously uh, here in a moment. And we'll look at that. Uh, but he did this. He, it also says that he had many children. And, and, uh, and we know that children are a blessing from the Lord, but children also can be 
a, a, a challenge. <laughs> and he had many sons and daughters. And not only that, every son and daughter that he had was born with a sin nature. And so as there's more and more people, there's more and more sin, there's more and more corruption, there's more and more challenges, there's more and more uh, selfishness, there's more and more greed, uh, you know, all these things that, that come with it uh, as well. And, uh, and here we're, we're getting, we're dealing with Enoch. And if you're kind of following the, the line, the names that we have there, you see, we're getting close to Noah. Uh, we're getting close to Noah here. And we know a little bit of what it was like in Noah's days. Uh, the Bible tells us what it was like in, in Noah's days. Matter of fact, just look ahead uh, into chapter six and verse five, where it says, then the Lord saw this is right before. Well, Noah's already here, but the, talking about what's going on, it says the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. If that's the way it was in Noah's day, you know what was going on in Enoch's day as well with the people that he was surrounded with as well. And we also know it because uh, in the small little book of Jude that's right before the book of Revelation, the New Testament, it refers to Enoch in his days as well. And so in Jude, Jude's only one chapter. And so in verse 14 and 15 there, let me reference that to you. And it gives us some insight into what <coughs> Enoch was that his walk with God was not challenge free. Uh, in other words, he was dealing uh, with a lot of things that could have pulled him away from God. In Jude, verse 14, it says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, okay? Seventh from Adam. So if you look at, you know, we got Adam. If you count Adam, Adam, and then you got, all right, count them with me, okay? Adam, what's that? One. Seth, Enosh, Canaan. Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, same guy, <laughs> same guy. Uh, seventh, so we're talking about the same guy, seventh from Adam, all right? Y'all did very good. I'll give yourself a hand for that, all right? Uh, but Enoch, the seventh from Adam, he prophesied about these men, the men that were there in his day uh, and the men that would be there in Jude's day as well. And by the way, same type of men are here today as well. It's the same sin. Uh, it says, saying, behold, the Lord comes with 10,000s of his saints. And by the way, that 10,000s is literally, the word is myriads, which is really 10,000s times 10,000s. Uh, there, it's not a limiting type thing. It's just talking about myriads uh, of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them, all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. I think there were some ungodly people uh, there in that day. That's what he's, he's, he's living in. Now, let me mention this. Some, you know, uh, have talked about, you know, this and, and said that it's from this, uh, the book of Enoch, which is, is, is not necessarily a, a true book. We don't know uh, that that's, this is a quote from that. I think, you know, I, I think it would be, he says it's the same Enoch here, the, the, this seventh from Adam. And, and I think that it's, it's something that Enoch actually prophesied. We don't have it written down in Genesis, but that doesn't mean he didn't say it. And there's, there's oral tradition and other things as well. And so I, I feel like it's, I don't feel like it's taken out of a, 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 a twisted book and, and put in the Bible. I think it's something that Enoch actually said. And it really is true and matches up with the rest of the Bible as well. Uh, that he, he did this. So that's just, you know, you can study that further uh, if you want to. But notice what he says here. First of all, he says, behold, the Lord comes, uh, is what his prophecy starts off with there in verse 14. And so he knew this. I mean, here's Enoch way back then, and he knew God was coming. Uh, he knew that the Lord was coming. He knew that the Lord was coming to redeem that first coming. But here he's talking about coming in judgment. And so he knew something about the second uh, coming as well. How would he know that? He walked with God. <laughs> That's how he knew it uh, and stuff is that God told him uh, uh, about that. And so he, the, the, there it is. And, and so, and the idea of it when he says behold is the idea of wake up because the Lord is coming. And that was true in his day because the judgment was coming. The judgment of the flood was coming uh, then, but it's especially true today because 
uh, the, the Lord is coming. You know, people are asleep today. We can fall asleep as church members as well about the second coming. Why? Because it's delayed. We, I heard preaching on the second coming of Jesus. I remember back in the 70s hearing preachers, you know, preach on that and everything. And they said he was coming back before the, the you know, before the end of the, uh, of the 20th century and stuff. And, and all they say, you know, it's a, when he didn't come, well, he's not coming back. Oh yes, he is. And so, but delay can cause us to kind of fall asleep about the second coming, uh, the deception of the enemy. And boy, he, especially in prophecy, he really likes to deceive. That can lead to people falling asleep. Our own disobedience, not living for the Lord, can harden our heart to the truth of God's word and what's going to happen. And so those things can can uh, help, cause us to fall asleep. And so what does Enoch said? He said, behold, the Lord comes. Wake up. Pay attention. He's coming. He's coming with myriads of saints there. And uh, and so, and then he says to execute judgment. And so he's talking about the wickedness in his day and that's wickedness as well. And I mentioned, you know, four different times there, he mentions the word ungodly, the ungodly people, the ungodly deeds, the ungodly way, the ungodly sinners. And so uh, uh, they were, and uh, I like, it's, it's it, <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Time to time to close. Is that, if that's the president calling me, tell him I'm busy. All right. Uh, I'm, I've got more impor important things to do. I'm, I'm teaching the word of God. <laughs> um, the uh, but the, it's, it's interesting that they use the word ungodly, and he says that he walked with God, and so there's a direct um, uh, analogy there that that these people did not walk with God. They did not follow the God that he walked with, the only God. And so Enoch walked with God diligently. He knew God in this prophecy here in Jude. He knew him as the coming one. He knew him as the holy one. He knew him as the just judge. He knew him, you know, it says there uh, that he is, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, he's the God who hears and knows everything that's going on. And that's the God that Enoch walked with diligently. And then the third thing is he walked with God eternally. He walked with God eternally. So back in Genesis chapter 5, um, we see there in verse 24, that's where it says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. It says again the second time that he walked with God, and then all of a sudden he was not. What does that mean? That means he didn't die. He just was not. There's no mention here in this passage. Every, every other one it says, and he died, and he died. Doesn't say that about Enoch. He just all of a sudden was not. He was just gone. He was translated, if you will, from this earth into heaven. Amen. And the Bible teaches us that there's a day coming when many will experience this themselves. And I don't know about you, but I wish it was right now. <laughs> Uh, wouldn't that have been something if it happened right there? <laughs> uh, uh, I would have been, yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, let me read to you First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. It's talking about those who have died. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. We have hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, but then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. I don't know about you, but I look forward to that day when you and I are going to be was not. <laughs> we'll be was not, uh, just like Enoch. Enoch was not. And it says not only that he was not, but why was he not? Why does it say that he was not? Because God took him. This God that he walked with took him. Took him to himself. We know where Enoch is. Enoch is. He's with God. That's exactly where he is. Can you imagine that in a moment? 
in a moment going from the sin-filled, painful world to a sinless, holy, glorious presence of God. Wow. Wow. That's the way it'll be for the Christian. That's the way it'll be when you die. Don't fear death. That's the way it'll be when you die. Jesus will come and take you to glory. It'll be just like that. That's the way it'll be when the rapture takes place, whenever that takes place. And uh, and if you don't believe in the rapture, then you can be wrong if you want to, all right? So, <laughs> uh, and uh, you can stay here if you want to. I'm gone. Uh, but uh, good to know you back. That's right. It'd be good to leave all this junk behind. And, uh, and I tell you what, the older I get, the more I hunger for it. Or I'm looking for it. I know Jerry's uh, Phillips and I we were talking about that. He said, "You know, I got more people up there than I do down here." Mm -hmm. And uh, and so uh, and it's not just the people. Matter of fact, I, I want to see my dad and my grandmother and a lot of folks. I, I want to see, but I want to see Jesus. <laughs> I want to see Jesus. Well, if you want to see Jesus, walk with God. Walk with God personally. Walk with God diligently, and the day will come when you'll walk with God eternally. And uh, I tell you what, that's that's some good stuff right there. <laughs> uh, good stuff and just uh, some short verses there. We've got a few more to look at. Uh, the next one is Methuselah. Uh, Methuselah. So let's look at him in verse uh, 25. That's the son of Enoch. It says, Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. And after he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. His dad uh, possibly was lived the sh one of the shortest amount of times, maybe other than Abel uh, there. Uh, but uh, he lives the longest amount of time. Uh, lived longer than any other uh, recorded 969 years. There may have been others that lived longer because every son and daughter's age is not recorded, but as far as being recorded, uh, Enoch was his dad, so we had that godly example uh, of, of walking with God. And he's also going the other direction. He's the granddad of Noah. And so we see Noah as a man of faith, a man of righteousness. He had to get that from somewhere. Uh, and so he may have even got it from uh, Methuselah uh, and and. and taught that way. The name means man of the spear, man of the spear. Uh, and so it's the idea of, you know, a spear is thrown or some say man of the dart or arrow, an arrow is shot. And so a man is someone who's mortal and dying. And the spear is something that, you know, or an arrow is something that comes and it, it brings the punishment. It brings the attack. And so it's the idea of, of death bringing uh, is the idea as a man of the spear, but that's the idea of, of mortalness, you know, bringing things into uh, our life. And so some say about uh, Methuselah uh, that the flood started uh, when uh, he died. It's, uh, uh, and it appears that that's exactly what happened. And the map backs it up. If you look at it, it says there, uh, in um, in verse 25, says Methuselah lived 187 years. So if you want to write down 187, he can. And then it says, and he begot. Uh, uh, and then it says, okay, he lived 187 years. And then here comes uh, Lamech, and Lamech has Noah, and he lives in verse 28, 182 years. And it says that Noah was 600 years when the flood came. So you add 187, 182, and 600, and you get 969. So apparently, he wasn't killed in the flood, but when he died is when the flood started. He wouldn't have been killed in the flood because he was a righteous, appears to be a righteous man uh, and, and everything. But apparently, he died, and when he died, the flood came. So uh, that's Methuselah. Next is Lamech. Now you've, we've heard, we looked at that uh, name, uh, the same name before in Cain's ancestry, but it's not the same dude. Just because people have the same name, uh, that doesn't mean that they're the, the same dude. Isn't that right, Doug? 
<laughs> you can have the same name and be different. Uh, isn't that right, Doug? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we all got Dougs here. Uh, got a lot of Dougs. That's why this group is so special to me. Uh, uh, but uh, Lamech, uh, his name means powerful. Uh, literally means, it means conqueror. It means strong one. It means overcomer. Uh, the world is getting more sinful and wicked and ungodly. And the, the battle is getting uh, more fierce. Uh, and it's possible because that's what his name is, that he stayed true. Uh, let's read the verses. I didn't read the verses. Verse 28 says, Lamech lived 182 years and had a son and called his name Noah. So he's the dad of Noah. And he said, this one uh, will comfort us concerning our work and tool of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. And he begot Noah and Lamech lived uh, 595 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech uh, were 777 years and he died. And so he lived 770 years, but he, uh, but when you add that up, he died before Methuselah did. Methuselah lives, outlived him uh, and everything. So, because um, uh, Methuselah was uh, 187 when Lamech was born. Uh, so he dies before the flood uh, as well. Uh, he has a son, Noah, and he names him uh, Comfort or Rest. Uh, and so and Noah is used by God to stop this mess that we've been talking about that's going on in the world. Uh, and, uh, and so in the midst of God's judgment, he's the one that receives comfort and that receives rest. And so we have the name Noah. And verse 32 says, And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And in chapter six, we'll get into uh, a little side story, not really side story, it's in the Bible there. And then we'll get into the life of Noah as well. We'll see more of that in chapter six. But I mentioned his name, it means rest or comfort. Uh, it's not a permanent rest, uh, but simply a break uh, because there's, you know, even though uh, God destroys the world and the wickedness of the world through that flood, when he comes out, sin's still there because he's still there. People are still there. His family is still there. Uh, so it's simply a, a break. The flood was never meant to be a permanent solution. The permanent solution is the seed of the woman that's coming, the, the, the one that would be born of a virgin, the one that will live the perfect life, the one that will bear the cross and pay the price for our sins and be raised from the dead on the third day. He's the permanent solution. Not judgment, grace grace. And so we're so thankful for that. And Noah becomes an example of obedience uh, that leads to rest, of a righteousness that leads to rest, of a faith that leads to rest, of a witness that leads to rest and points <coughs> to rest. And so those are the names in the line of, of Adam there. Now, if you look at your outline there, Look at the, the names there. Which Do y'all have Adam on your outline, that Adam means man and stuff? Uh, I, I, on mine, it doesn't, but I thought I put it on, on y'all's and just didn't correct mine uh, and stuff. But it ha Adam means man, and so Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh means weak or fleshly. You can write the word fleshly out beside that if you want to. Canaan means uh, possessions. Uh, Mahalo means praise of God, or you could say the God of praise if you want to write that out there. Jared means descent or descends. Enoch means uh, dedicated. Methuselah means man of the dark, but we talked about how it means uh, to bring, uh, to bring um, the idea of the spear or the dart and what it brings with it. Uh, and then Lamech means powerful and Noah means rest. And so if you try to read that down as a sentence, it says this. It says, man is appointed to fleshly possessions, but the God of praise descends to the dedicated to bring powerful rest. And then there's some that use more the, the Greek translations. That's where yours use more the Septuagint translations. And so... Uh, uh, Ryan has done a study on these names as well. And so with the, the Greek translation of these names, which is somewhat similar, some, some it's a little bit different. Read what you have there. Uh, man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching his death shall bring the despairing comfort and rest. Wow. His death brings the despairing 
rest. Rest. Everything in this book, starting with Genesis chapter 1, points to Jesus. Points to Jesus. He's the answer. He's the answer. And all we've just gotten through chapter 5, and we've seen over and over and over again the word of God saying, He's coming. He's coming. It's going to be okay. He's coming. Put your faith in the one that's coming. You may not know his name yet. You may not put your faith in the one that's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And that's what this line of Adam is pointing to. And that's what the life of Noah and even the picture of the ark and, and what happens there, it points to Jesus and what Jesus provides for us through his death on the cross and through his resurrection. And that's what Easter's all about. And so I encourage you to take uh, the opportunities that you have to, to reach out to people. You know, we, um, with our Beast Feast, I, I mentioned the, the 16 or 17 decisions, and we divided that up among the staff. And I hadn't heard back from all of them. I talked to some of them. And I know there's some that I've talked to that uh, some of them may be here tonight over at the youth because some of them were youth. And I've talked to some parents and different things. One was here, uh, didn't make it Sunday morning, but was here Sunday night. One family that had three decisions in that family. And so uh, some that we talked to uh, made decisions for Christ, but have been going to another church. Or And, and so when we talked to them, we said, well, you're more than welcome here with what we have, you know, uh, and, and everything. But if you're, you know, wherever, just get plugged in somewhere, you know, and, and, and grow in the word, wherever that is. And so... Uh, you know, I'm hoping that there will not that we'll have the opportunity to disciple some of them, but the ones we don't have the opportunity to disciple, that others will take that, that opportunity and disciple them, and that maybe you know one day pretty soon that we'll see some of those even be baptized at that step of obedience and following their faith in Christ. Uh, but uh, we always need to be ready to be a witness uh, and uh, and and a witness to the world around us. This world is messed up. And it was, boy, was it messed up in Noah's day. Uh, but we're called to be light in the darkness. Uh, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. And so be that witness. And yes, that means giving a verbal testimony. You can't, people can't know Jesus if they don't hear who Jesus is. Somebody's got to tell them that. Now, that doesn't mean that we've got to go get a, uh, PA system and go in front of Walmart and yell at everybody that they're going to hell and they need Jesus and stuff. That's, I'm not saying that, but when the opportunity presents itself, tell them about Jesus. And if the opportunity doesn't present itself, make a presentation anyway, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, look for an opportunity to do that. Don't be forceful about it. Don't be rude about it, but in a loving way, share what Jesus means to you. Share what Jesus has done for you and do that but that is most effective when it's matched up with a man or a woman who walks with god who walks with god so let's take that to heart and let's be that type of christians and let's do that tonight and tomorrow and look for an opportunity because easter is coming and i guarantee you there are people that if you invite them to easter that will come that won't come any other time just because it's Easter. We, we're blessed in this country and we're blessed where we live that people somehow they, 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 they know and because of how they've been raised and because of what they heard that it's good to go to church on Easter. Yeah. And so encourage, look for those opportunities uh, to plant that seed, to be that witness. And uh, you may not be at, have an opportunity to go through the whole gospel presentation, but you can, you can invite somebody to come and hear it that Sunday and uh, and let them respond. And that's that's being a witness. And so look for those opportunities. Pray for those opportunities. When you get up in the morning, ask God to give you one and see what he does. And uh, most of all, as you're doing it, walk with God. Walk with God, okay? Let me pray for us. Lord, I, I thank you for the encouragement of your word, for the examples in your word. And... Uh, we don't read anything about Enoch being some super spiritual man. He was just a man, just like all these others. He was born with sin, but something changed in his life. Something, you happened to him. 
And he made that decision that every day he was just going to walk with you. Walk with you. Lord, I pray that we would make that decision. That we would be determined. Yes, get up in the morning, read the word. But we wouldn't stop when we finish our reading and put the Bible down. That we would go from reading the word to living the word. And to walking with the word. And the word is you. So help us to do that. I know the enemy doesn't want us to do that. But you're more powerful. You're, you're greater. And you can lead us and help us to do that. Lord, that's what this world needs more than anything. They don't need somebody necessarily telling them how wrong they are. They need to, someone to show them how they can be made right. How they can be set free. How they can uh, be changed. Uh, and it's all through you. So, Lord, especially in these upcoming weeks, uh, Lord, I pray that there'd be a, a special anointing on our lives to be the witnesses that you've called us to be and to walk closer to you than we ever have and that we would not go back if we live for 300 more years. Every one of those days in those 300 years, we'd walk with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.